Okay, now that we have looked over each of the various collection um, structures in Python, that is the lists, uh, the tuples, sets, and dictionaries, uh, we can move on to the for loop, which is a mechanism um, that's in place to help us work with those uh, those collections a little easier um, or you know it's just built for them so what we do with that with this for loop what the general idea of it is that if we have a list of items and keep in mind that here in this class in the examples we only have what seven seven items in the list seven elements uh, these lists can be quite large really. there could be thousands we have no idea there could be millions we, we have no idea how many elements could be in there and um, in many cases we can't depend on the order of them and we can't just directly modify uh, these these elements so it, it is nice to have a mechanism that will allow us to iterate through them all and and that's what the for loop is is really built for in python that's a little bit different than um, the way it operates in many other languages a number of other languages the for loop works in those other language in other languages the for loop uh, is is really very similar to a while loop and in, but in this case um, when we as we look at the examples you'll see that uh, it, it, it really is built for and suited for uh, these collections that you're working with so um, I will run through the use of um, the for loop now uh, by example, as usual, uh, I have a series of examples in Thani, and we'll just go through those examples so you can see how the thing works, how the structure works. Uh, it, it also, by the way, works on uh, strings, as we'll see here in the examples. So let's jump on into it and see if we can work this out. So here's my first example. Here, here's an example of, of how the the four works. So this is the four, right? The, the, this, as usual here, in these last numerous examples that I've created, I, I've done them all inside of a function so that I could call the function from uh, the command line down, down below. So uh, let me just grab this real quick. This, uh, uh, this call right there. The call looks like that's going to be the call. So I'm just going to copy that so that I can paste it down here. So the for loop itself is this part portion of the structure right here, beginning with the word for. <clears throat> and so we have some variable here, i, for, and we're just gonna read that as every element, <laughs> okay? For every element in whatever kind of a collection we want. So this, I currently have a list here, right? Because there are square brackets. Uh, but this works for tuples, it works for um, sets, and it works for dictionaries. Now, dictionaries are, are slightly, a little bit more com complex, and I have some examples down below for us. Uh, but they're, they're very, very similar. Um, and, and the other structures, the, the list, the tuple, and set, are, and, and even, the, uh, even a string, all work almost identically. Right here, I could change this into, you know, into a tuple just by changing that to a, a parenthesis, changing these, right? And then the same thing, it'll, it'll work just the same. All right, so for every element in whatever collection I have here, colon, do the body of the four, right? And so we could have multiple, I only have one line here, one uh, statement. That's a statement, one line. I'm only asking it to do one thing, just print it. Print whichever one you're on. So the element. For each element, well, print each one. Whatever one you're looking at, print it. So I'm expecting to see this print out. Uh, but if I wanted another line in here, it's just kind of uh, to show how I would work this. So I would have some line right there, right? And then, so I'd have two. Two lines are controlled by the body. Three lines are controlled by the body. Now this one, by the way, I'll go through this. This line is not controlled by the for loop because it's not in the body anymore. Python uses white space to determine what's in the body and what's not. Now in other languages, 
I'll just make notes since we're talking about this. In other languages, uh, they would likely use a curly bracket right there, and I would put one here. And that was curly bracket. It looks like Python's going to let me do it, although it doesn't require it. It's going to let me do it because so many other languages do that. So in the other languages uh, that use the curly bracket, they do not use white space, right? But we, st we would still write the code uh, such that it looks like this, uh, indented like this. I guess Python is just uh, enforcing the white space convention that most people use when they're programming. So you know it's very explicitly clear um, when, you, when the curly brackets are in place where the end of the, the body of the loop ends. And it, it's over right there. It's, it's not so tough to see with this, but many I can imagine people would kind of not understand, possibly, that this is different than these three, right? These three are in the body, and this one is not. Let's get rid of that curly bracket. It, it might be interesting to just see. Let's leave it in there. Uh, I don't, these aren't even real statements. Oh, I can do it like this. And we can just test this on the fly while we're playing around here. Oh, I did the wrong. Oh, because I, I did enter. Darn it. Okay, that's what I get for playing around here. All right, let's just, let's do it like this. So we can see if the curly brackets work in Python as well, right? So I hope this kind of uh, puts your mind in a certain direction as well. You want to know how something works in a pro any programming language, including this one. Just try it, you know, tinker with it. See what happens. That's the way it's done. You know, we got to push this. I wonder, they might even have a warning for us that says, you know, you're not supposed to use curly brackets. Okay. Well, let's just run it and see. Uh, if it doesn't like it, then we'll just take the curly brackets out. Because, you know, I know it works without the curly brackets. All right, that's my call. And it worked. Right, one, two, three, four, five, six, six, uh, two for six, eight, ten. Right, it printed each element in turn. So let's let's read this again. It's saying for each element, do the body. So we'll first look at the two. We'll do the body. We'll look at the four. We'll do the body. In this case, I'm trying to be a bit explicit here because in this case, there's only one line of code in the body. There could be more. If there were three lines, three statements in the body of this for loop, then first we would do all three statements for the two, and then we would do all three statements for the four, and then we would do all three statements for the six, on and on until we reach the end of, in this case, the list, right? Um, I have integers here. It doesn't matter what the data is, uh, the type of the data. It's going. It's going to do. Still do the same thing, no matter what. No matter what the the, the data type is. It's probably two here, right? Yeah. See that? It's printing them all. So, and and and, and it's interesting to look at the way it's printing them, right? It's not printing them in a line. Why? because it prints D, that's over. Now we come back up and it finds another one of these and then it prints another one. So we're getting a new line after each one of them. It's not printing them all on the same line. Okay, well, so I think I've said enough about that. All right, so let's look at a string. Let's just look at this part for now. Uh, there's my loop, right? For, in this case, we'll read it as <laughs> for each character in this string, print the character. So I'm expecting that we're going to, when I run this, 
that we're going to see marshmallow printed vertically because it'll it'll print the M finished and then print the A finished new line print the R new line print the S new line okay so let's uh, I think I saw Just change it. There's marshmallow. It's up there. There we go. Marshmallow, and it's done vertically. Okay. Pretty straightforward, right? As long as you read it properly. If it, if you or if and especially if you're not familiar with a for loop in other programming languages, then this is easy to accept. Uh, I, what I did here was I created a, a different way of looking at this. So I created a variable food and put the, um, the string marshmallow in that variable. So now what I would do is say for every, every uh, character in food, print I. We'll do that. I will do. What happened here? Did I go too far to the left? I did. It's three and three is what I'm doing. So there's marshmallows. There's no difference, right? So either it could be the string could be in a variable. Same thing could be here, right? I could have created this list into and put it placed it into a variable as I've done and as we did when we were working with lists and then I could have said for D in that variable my list I think is what I called it in the in a previous video so my list equals this thing and then inside the loop for D in my list print D okay so let's move on uh, I, I mentioned that it's it works for all the collections it is a little diff slightly you know, it's it's it, it's more complex i guess because for for a dictionary because a dictionary has key value pairs right not just single items but two items so we have to it it has to do a little bit more to work with a dictionary and so what i can do here's my dictionary that's just the way that we create a dictionary right nothing special there for each key so this is key colon value right so for each key in a dictionary I guess I could have called it my dict so it would um, <laughs> it would uh, be the same as my previous examples but whatever that's all right print the key right so that means what we're expecting to print the way I have this written here I hope implies to you that what we're going to print here is the key and not the value the key and not the value so fruit will get printed not apple All right we'll try it four underscore one did I change anything there I don't think I did underscore one color fruit pet so it's the key portion color fruit uh, and pet those are the keys not the values okay in order to get the values I've got my next one that's four underscore two but it's the same setup same dictionary for each key in the dictionary I'm going to print the key which is what we just did here, right? So that's color, fruit, pet, and then an arrow, right? I've just made a string here. And then look at this, it's very interesting. I can use the square bracket notation of an index. And the key, as we mentioned when we were talking about dictionaries, the key is functioning as your index. It's just that it's an index that you make up. It, it's, it's, it's not created starting at zero by default. By default, you're, you make that, right? You could make it zero if you wanted, 
<laughs> and then you'd have something that looked just like a, a list. <laughs> if if it, instead of color it was zero and fruit it was one and pet it was two, you'd be creating a list then because it would operate the same way where you use the square brackets and you put a zero, one, or two in there, whatever your index would be. So key is your index now. And you can access element individual values by using your own index. Okay, so let's just take a little peek at this. And see how it works. Okay, so that's key each each line that's printed for each one so here's our first one the first one is up to there we're going to print the key which is color and then we're going to print this right arrow which we have right there and then the value that goes with that key which is blue in this case blue and that is really there's more there's a lot more to do and we'll probably um, we're probably going to work on for loops more right but initially here let's just get an understanding of the collections and the basic functionality of the for loop to to iterate it's, it might even be better to call it an iterator because it does just i mean iterating means looping so i'm not sure but Maybe using a different word than loop um, might help to distinguish it in some sort of way as something different than the while loop, and it, even though it's very similar, all right, it's it really seems like it was built specifically to work with these collections. So I'm giving it a different name, something that kind of goes with uh, the collection, binds it to the collection. All right, that's all I've got for you on for loops for the moment for this video. We'll. I'm pretty sure we're going to revisit this because I've already, it's, it's more complicated than I'm telling you right now. That's just the, the fundamentals of how it works. Um, we'll want to do things with these loops and with, these, with those data elements. Whether they're in a list or a dictionary, probably won't do anything with a set because um, I'm not going to do any set theory with you. Uh, but I'll probably just stick with lists and, um, uh, or strings or dictionary items as we move forward and we'll get some more examples of some details on how uh, uh, this this for loop might be used um, in maybe some more real world type problems kind of pseudo real world problems I don't want to come up with anything too complex but enough to uh, that you can see that there's an actual real use for that you probably can see that already Anyway, all right, this video is over. I kept it relatively short, didn't I? I think I have it pretty short, yep. So, all right, I will see you then um, on the next video.